Here we are, everybody. Day two. Let's see what we've got to do. There's a lot. <laughs> oh, find speed and sniff it. Right. The hangover's coming on mega strong now. You need more speed in your bloodstream. Find some, put it in your hand, equip it in the held slot in your inventory, and off we go. Okay, let's look at the timed stuff. I need to get another 20 real to pay for our room. You know what? I, I kind of thought about it. Like the, I finished the day at the end of the last recording session that I did. I kind of regret not looking around some more uh, without uh, Kim, because I bet we could have found some, maybe some unique things. So in particular, I should have talked to that, uh, that woman by the statue. Shit. Well, maybe tonight I'll, I'll, I'll take a more of a look around. We got to uh, find smokes and smoke them. Probably at the Frita. Find money. Um, the Borscht. Right. I think we can get in there past one. I think they said. Uh, close the water lock on Wednesday. We're into Tuesday. Okay. So that's obviously we can't do that on Tuesday. Uh, explore the whirling secret passages. Okay. Who's in the union box? Guards has told you some unruly union men gather in the mess hall of the whirling and rags. They're not here today, but most likely they'll eventually show up. Keep an eye out for them. Oh, okay. So I was wrong about that. I thought it was going to be in the evening. Maybe it'll be in the evening um, or sometime during the day on Tuesday. Find the armor pieces. Pick up the dice from the dice maker. Eight hours from 20, 100. So we add four to that. So we got another four. So we got it. We could probably get the dice. Maybe we'll do that first. Getting the body down. We have to go uh, talk to Everett Claire, right? Now that we have access to the harbor and it's daytime. Tattoos. Ask around about tattoos. I think once we go to the dice maker, we can also talk to the bookstore owner. Ask him to tell you about the case. I assume that we did this, like we did the briefing last night, right? Maybe there's another briefing to get. Or we need to just talk to him about it. Run the number on the victim's armor. Call Alice back in a day. Okay, maybe we can do that too. The hangman's boots. I really wish I could have done that last night. Smoke on the balcony. Um, so this is going to be like way later in the day, past nine o'clock. Joyce's info on the lynching. There's something she wants to tell you. You just have to present her with your badge. We didn't find the badge. Okay. Doomed commercial area. Plaisance. Okay. So we'll probably go to the dice maker and then do that. Who made the call? I think this might have something to do with the smoker. Track down your gun. We do know that uh, the gun was at the pawn shop and it was sold to someone for like 20 bucks or something like that. I thought maybe it was the Kunes, or Kunis, whatever her name is. Kunese. Um, so maybe I should talk to her again. Track down your badge. No. We haven't found a sad song on tape. Maybe in the pawn shop. All right, so I think what we're going to do first. I could look in the mirror again. Should I? Yeah, let's take a look in the mirror. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. So we can't take a shot at that yet. We still need to up our stats. Okay. I think I'm going to, I think we're going to go sober for the day. We got that nasty hangover. Um, get rid of this for now. I assume Kim is down in the lobby again. The door is closed. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. 
Still nothing. Did I just like screw this up or something? Like, I don't actually want an answer to that, by the way. I'm just sharing my thoughts. Oh, here we go. Oh, that section. Okay. So the section wasn't even opened. Let's talk to Kim. Let's talk to Kim. Morning. When you talk to Kim, everybody, you got to be in the right spot. You know, we are just like a half inch too far forward. We had to do an entire turnaround, move that half inch, and then turn around again to talk to Kim. Gives you a quick nod. Looks like we can get to work at once. The union mess have turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. What do you mean rowdy? I mean ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCA being here. They prefer to be policed by the union. These men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast? There's talk of an armed wing of the union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. Wait, the Hardy Boys is like, I feel like that was like a book series. Was that like some kids that were investigators? I feel like that's like, like a book series from my past, but I think Hardy, it was H-A-R-D-Y. Okay. Um, are these the men Gart told us about yesterday? I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. Did we just remember something that Kim couldn't remember? One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. Find out who's in the union box, okay. There's so many of them, maybe we should call in reinforcements? That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? Let's roll. One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Okay. Maybe just be like, you're not that important to us. Good. A power move. Purposefully concentrate on something else first. I like it. But... Aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? I am curious. They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Little do they know, I own the place. Oh, I can get in there. Just a moment. The old woman turns back to the cafeteria manager. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. Cafeteria manager appears genuinely apologetic. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. She turns back to you with a weary smile. What's going on, Lena? The lady is distressed. Perhaps something more upbeat might cheer her up. Howdy, Lena, what's kicking? Good day, ma'am, everything all right? Sorry, ma'am, I didn't mean to eavesdrop on your conversation. Tell me how I might make it up to you. What's kicking? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. I got a, we got a phone in the, in the car. A faint smile tells you she appreciates the effort. Oh. But at the moment, her mind is on more serious matters. You know, she helped us out. I kind of want to help her out. She's twiddling her thumbs. That's cool. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead, too. Um, wait, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. She frowns. I'm trying to remember who Gary is. Why did you need to use the phone anyway? To let the young woman who's house sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and Gary were supposed to get back We're by Monday night. Sudden, I guess. But they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. Oh, no. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. You hear that? Someone's missing. 
there could be foul play afoot. I love missing persons cases. That's right. Now skip the foreplay. Time to dive into the dark. Yeah. Areas. Start shaking down the usual suspects. You know, legwork. Yeah. Using pop culture. Doing some good will alleviate the hangover. At least you're of use to someone. Okay, I'll bite. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him uh. at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. She glances out the window toward the bay. More important than a missing expedition? Ooh. I don't know. Expeditions often lead to something interesting. What is this expedition your husband was on? So your husband is some kind of scientist. Tell me more about morale, looks, character, your relationship. You don't notice this about me, but actually I have lost all memory of the world and myself, and I have no idea what I'm doing. About your pin. Well, we're definitely not saying four because we don't want to admit that to anyone. I want to hear about the expedition. Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant uh, Gary are assistant. studying an extremely rare species of insect. Now we're talking. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? The cryptozoologist's wife. I don't know if we got that piece of information before. I mean, I've been, I've been playing this like it's, it's been almost a month since I started this. It's, it's getting hard to remember what I like some of the first conversations that I've had. The water lock that was broken. Could this be it? Ah. So wait, who's this scary person? Do you trust him? The water lock to the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably just stuck. No, 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 no. Who's the scary person? Oh, sweetie, it's nothing like that. We got to like read far too much into this. Gary's as loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life. Oh, I, wish there, day. I wish there was more options to like, just like really lead into this Gary thing. The water locked to the other side of the coast is broken. They're probably just stuck over there. Oh my. What happened to the water lock? Probably just some technical problem. Well, whatever the cause, I'm thankful to both of you. You've spared me another sleepless night. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yes, some left field scientific research is exactly what you need right now. Funk up that. Vanilla murder <laughs> investigation. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the world. It's Lena. Okay. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. If I see him, I'll let him know you're here. When or if I get there. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. So your husband's some kind of scientist. Oh, yes. A zoologist. A cryptozoologist, to be more precise. And what is cryptozoology? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research <gasps> into mythological beasts and urban legends. Lieutenant sounds unimpressed. There's also that book I wanted to get about the pale. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology, one specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Huh, okay. Searching for such species called cryptids is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. Sounds like less of a pseudoscience and just like a, a science that is hard to produce results in. She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. Okay. Oh yeah. She's less worried about her husband. 
Maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids? There's really no point in manipulating anyone. She'd be only too pleased to tell you about her work. Go on and ask. Hey, Lena, I'd like to hear about some of the cryptids you've studied. Could you just tell me about a couple of them? Oh, I'd be delighted. Truth be told, I could really use the company too. Anything for you. One cryptid, not a couple. One. This one turned into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. Shut the fuck up, Kim. Cryptid extravaganza, I like the sound of that. And I don't. Just one. Or he'll be disappointed. In oh, okay. We don't really want to disappoint Kim. But I feel like the more we disappoint him, the more he'll start to come to our side of things. Like, if we show him how, like, cool this stuff is. Ooh, tough choice there. Okay. Biggest, tiniest, most dangerous. Invisible. Are there any invisible cryptids? What an interesting question. And the answer is yes, there are. Damn right. Of course. All fairy tales have someone or something invisible in them. Childish? No. Shush, Kim. Yeah, this is exactly how I was reacting. She's going to tell me about the invisible cryptid. What is it? It's the Col de Mama Dakwa. Holy shit, it's that's a name. Name means thin whisper of sound, and that's precisely what it is. Self-replicating sound waves, invisible and intangible. The Col de Mama is very afraid of us, which makes it incredibly difficult to track. This sounds awesome. Col de Mama Dakwa can also be translated as a whisper, light and low. Col de Mama Dakwa. Um, oh, and we got that from encyclopedia, so we should, re we should sound really, we're going to sound really smart by saying this, a whisper light and low. Yes, that's another translation. They're both quite lovely, aren't they? Her eyes light up behind her glasses. Although the low part is a little ironic, the Col de Mama Dakwa makes, or rather is, such a high-pitched sound that other animals, including humans, can't hear it. It could be everywhere, all of the time, and we wouldn't know. Fine, I'll bite. How can an animal be a sound? The lieutenant looks at her skeptically. Many scientists have asked the same question. Some have claimed that it isn't itself a sound, but a tiny corpuscle that emits sound waves. But there's no evidence to support this theory. Huh. Could it be here? Right now? It could be. As I said, it could be everywhere. And we wouldn't know any better. It could be ringing all the days of our lives and nights. Um. What evidence is there of this animal being a sound? Plenty. It's the evidence that led to its discovery. In the 20s, a group of areopagite ornithologists, that is, scientists who study birds, were trying out a new recording technology for capturing sounds outside the range of human hearing. Okay. When playing back recordings they had made in the foothills of the Ea mountain range, they noticed certain anomalies Patterns that seemed random at first, but on closer examination, were consistent with the waveforms of songbirds. Just not eagerly. The scientists soon discovered they could track and even predict what appeared to be feeding, mating, and migration patterns based on sound waves in a strictly delimited range of ultrasonic frequencies, even higher than those of the highest pitched bat calls. She transforms, when speaking about these strange animals, into a confident woman. She's awesome. They realized that they had discovered a new species and called it the Col de Mama Dakwa, after the Paracanassian name for the Voice of God, which is said to be very silent. Go on. They grew quite obsessed with these little birds. Even though they couldn't see them, they could distinguish among individual birds and uh, even began to name some of them. Name them? Sequester, Time, Joss Can. 
those are but some of the Mamadakwa they followed individually. Why is the Mamadakwa so afraid of us? That is a sad story. A group of university students assisting with the field work in their enthusiasm for the project, and no doubt because they were preoccupied with impressing their professors, nearly drove it to extinction. Extinction? They tried to communicate with it and had no other means but sound. So they started sending out sound waves at frequencies they thought might match the Mama Dakwas. And what happens when a sound wave meets another sound wave of the same frequency, dear? They, uh, don't they, like, uh, constructively interfere? So they become more powerful? This lady really should be a teacher. She's really good at the explaining things thing. Psst. They cancel each other out. They cancel each other out! Psst. Oh. Exactly. And these tests were performed so recklessly that when they happened upon the right frequency, well, they wiped out most of the population. I thought it was... I thought if they were the same frequency, they, they work together. It's like that, uh, you know, that bridge? The bridge that, like, I can't remember the name of it. The one that, like, wobbled because it was, like, it was, like, designed such that it interfered constructively with the uh the wind okay great regret washes over her a wending cloth it's been a while high school science you know after that the corpuscle appears to have migrated elsewhere there have been recordings of anomalies similar to those spotted in ea but they've been few and far between it's impossible to confirm the presence of any stable Kaltamama Dakwa population anywhere. I'm going to find them. Of course. A common thread in these. Disappearance and unfalsifiability. I like the story, though, ma'am. He concedes. I'm glad you did, dear. Um, she seems genuinely glad. Interesting. What about... What about what? I can ask more? What's the most dangerous cryptid? Hey. You promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. But Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptid too? The lieutenant pauses thoughtfully. Something in him breaks. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's have more cryptids. <laughs> I told you! The more we disappoint him, the more on board he's going to get with us. Well, the most dangerous cryptid is thought to have been the gnome of Jeroma. None of its victims survived. Grieven relatives never even found their bodies because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue almost entirely. What did the cryptid look like? It was, reportedly, a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and a gangly little thing. Quite scary to look at. Sounds scary. A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. She looks at you, her voice grave suddenly. If the body of the creature was found, why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks confirming the existence of this very little species? Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Uh-oh. Instead, all the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic uh, end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. That's sad. What about the biggest? That would be the giant of Koko Nur. She says as if it's common knowledge. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Kokonur desert in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. Kokonur. What do you mean strange light? Um, mirage or a psychogenous luminance. She does not elaborate the nature of this luminance further. Just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. Jeez, is it dangerous? 
The towering luminosity of Kokonur is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a Fata Morgana, others, fate unimaginable. What does uh, Fata Morgana mean? Uh, can you guys let me know that? I've heard that before, but I never really knew what it meant. Who are you? No animal can be that large. It's a mirage. That's what makes it so peculiar. A species surviving at the very limits of scientific law. The giant of Kokonur must be the largest animal the planet can support. There are limits, you see, to how large a metabolism and ecosystem can beget. Some say a gravity anomaly below the Kokonur desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. Great. This is great shit. You need more. <laughs> gravity anomaly? Digging it. Digging this parascientific stuff right here. Yeah, this is what our character and me, this is what we're all about. I want to know about the tiniest now. Cryobacter catlensis. She answers immediately. She didn't even have to think about it. Cryobacter catlensis? Yes, a unicellular bacterium that was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Kotla on the Boreal Plateau by renowned geologist Caitlin Mijanu some 70 years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, Caitlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's so special about it? The bacterial colony Mijanu found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate. Certainly from before recorded history, Mijanu disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. Wait, she injected herself with it? Yes. The bacteria had survived in the ice since times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. It's actually a little hard to see. But do go on. You mean there is an immortal geologist wandering the world? Yes, and she's quite mad too. <laughs> After she treated herself with the bacteria, she stopped aging, but also became increasingly eccentric and irascible so that even her oldest friends were forced to pull away. We can assume that she has been living somewhere in the wilderness for decades now, all alone except for the cryobacter catlensis coursing through her bloodstream. Oh, there were other questions I could have asked. I should have read all of them. Noted. Always read all the options before you pick, because I thought I'd be able to go through all of them. This has been educational. Sadly, we need to discuss something else. Of course, dear. Tell me more about Morel. Looks, character, your relationship. Oh, dear. I'm not sure where to begin. What does uh, your husband look like? Hmm. Well, his expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. It's always a challenge to describe the person you know best in the world. Let's try again. If I were trying to meet him on the street, what would I look for? Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame. And he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. You might say wild, even. Okay. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. One other thing, he'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him, even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. How long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. I like that too. Everyone celebrates, you know, like the 10th, the 20th. Every day matters. How'd the two of you meet? By a dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident. Uh, and he just divorced. We hit it off and, well, here we are. Two bad things bring them together. That's nice. I think I have all the information I need. Let's move on. I hope I've been useful. Tell me more about this rare insect your husband is looking for. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. Yes! But 
I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. Bore me! The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. No, I want to hear about the insect. Well, it's a phasmid, technically, but... Ah, yes. Phasmatodia. A diverse group of insects whose bodies resemble twigs. Ah, Leaves, right. That sort of thing. Ghost insects. Colloquially. I know I had heard that uh, term before, but I couldn't remember. Oh, yeah. Here comes the interesting. Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insul Indian coast. Hence its name, the Insul Indian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the Phasmid with us, officers. Hey. She looks you in the eye and nods thoughtfully. We could be in some kind of uh, pseudo-scientific journal. I knew it. We're going to be chasing made-up insects with cryptozoology. Shut the fuck up, Kim! It's not made up, officer. I can assure you. There's a hint of defensiveness to her retort, but also confidence. She seems to sit up a little straighter in her chair. It's simply elusive, so much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. Uh, does it have cool powers? Yes, <gasps> it can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years, centuries even. Kind of how like we can blend in with any crowd, you know, like we just figure out the ins and outs of, of the, the group of people and we just no one can recognize us. Um, is it valuable? Oh, I doubt it. No one gets into cryptozoology for the money, sweetie. Is it dangerous? <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? Good point. What makes you think the phasmid is around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They, they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect ah. that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. So a newspaper clipping is all the evidence you have. Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but their description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly, and they didn't even know what they were looking at. Okay, so what's so special about this stick bug then? Oh dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. The woman's face flushes with embarrassment. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. <laughs> I'd really like to hear about more cryptids. You know, to hell with it. Let's have more cryptids. <laughs> of course, officers. Oh, I've asked them at all. Is there a particular cryptid you two are interested in learning? All right. Of course, dear. That's all for now, ma'am. I would talk to Gert, but I'm just going to walk in here. <laughs>